Oh yeah, if you put a title card there, then it won't be weird. <coughs> yeah. Matters. Hi, welcome to Media Matters. If it matters in the media, it matters to us. I'm Jack. And I'm Sarah. In this episode, we'll be looking back at the week, seeing not just what made news, but looking at the media itself. Think of us as Media Watch, just without the journalistic integrity to avoid getting sued. And to kick off our first episode this week, we're looking at the newly released Facebook reactions. Ah, Facebook, when will you give us what we truly want? You take so much from us. Information on our friends, our favourite movies, how long we stalk our ex, and yet we ask so little in return. For a number of years now, we've been asking you for other ways to engage with your content, beyond the like or the comment. And being the benevolent, multi-billion dollar social media giant you are, we really thought you'd listen. Facebook, you consistently show us what we want to see. It's almost like you have a secret algorithm and, uh, and analyze every piece of data we put out. But we need more. So when rumors of a dislike button came up last year, we got excited. Yes, we thought. Finally a way to shut down that racist troll from high school. Or maybe even a subtle way to let our relatives know that their article links are actually pretty shit. Yeah, that's right. You know who you are. A dislike button would better reflect Facebook reality, that all of Facebook friends pretty much passive-aggressively hate each other. Instead of a dislike button, as of last week, Facebook users can now express their feelings through six new emoji. These include a happy face for when the content makes you happy, a sad face for when you're angry, and a surprised face for, I guess, when you're feeling surprised. And for those who are concerned that they don't come across as clingy enough, there's now the love heart. Although a dislike button would have been great, it makes a lot of sense not to have one. Facebook wants to remain a happy and a fun place for users and businesses alike, and a Reddit-style dislike button would pretty much destroy that. In a time when a lot of young people are turning to places like Instagram and Snapchat to share moments in their lives, the Facebook reactions offer a very easy and a very low involvement way of encouraging more emotional engagement. I mean, it's certainly easier to click on a crying emoji than it is to talk to someone about why they're sad. While it might help to make the news feed more interesting and interactive, there are concerns about how Facebook will use the data generated with these reactions. Facebook has stated that for now, the reactions will operate in a similar way to a like button. In the future, however, reactions will likely become more and more significant in determining what appears in your newsfeed. For example, if you react angrily to certain types of content, will Facebook start showing you less of it? The same thing for sad content. Will Facebook become more conscious of hurting your feelings? Adding news about war and disease with just more photos of cute, snuggly, adorable kitties. Reacting negatively to certain posts shouldn't necessarily mean you don't want to see or you don't want to learn about these kinds of things. Facebook already predominantly shows the content that it thinks appeals to you, and as it should. I mean, if the company's going to uh, track my every move and sell all my data onto advertisers, it might as well give me something interesting to read while it doesn't. There's a risk that with the reactions data, Facebook will become even more predictable with the kinds of content it gives its users. One problem still remains. The current range of emoji just isn't enough to really express today's complicated world. So here at Media Matters, we've put together a few more reactions for Facebook to make it easier for everyone to show how they're really feeling. In keeping with our theme of the internet being a place of race, I mean free speech, last week Opal's player Alice Canuck posted this photo of herself for the Opal's end of season dress up party. And in preparation for all of the university dress up balls that you are bound to attend, here at Media Matters, this is our public service announcement. Don't be an idiot and don't do blackface. Liz Cambridge, former Opal's teammate, tweeted that she was shocked and disturbed by this image. See, every time someone dons blackface on Australian TV, it becomes a contentious issue. Mostly between Australians who think that blacking up is the national equivalent to wearing Crocs. Just plain embarrassing. And those people who think it's uh, just a bit of fun. You know what this means? It means hundreds of Facebook comments, mostly by men who look like they're in a PGA tour telling you that blackface is not racist. What a great drinking game. Take a drink every time someone starts a sentence with, I'm not racist, but 
and take a shot every time someone mentions the film White Chicks as a key text to their argument. Hashtag reverse racism. In response, Canuck tweeted, I'm sorry that people would think my support of Kanye is racist in some way. Look. Asking Mark Zuckerberg on behalf of Kanye for money is supporting Kanye and is in no way racist. Buying Tidal so you can listen to Kanye's album is supporting Kanye and is no way racist. Literally, you picked the only thing that is racist in some way. In the 1800s, white American actors rubbed their faces with shoe polish or black face paint to impersonate black people and act out racist stereotypes. During this time, African Americans were depicted as being lazy and incompetent in order to dehumanize them and to make it okay to treat slaves like they were less than human. Separating blackface from this horrifying history of oppression is impossible because it would mean disregarding the history of a group of people who have been marginalized for centuries and are still being discriminated against today. You want to dress up like Kanye to a party? There's a ton of different non-racist ways to do it. Literally just don't paint your face black. So check out our Facebook page for a Kanye mask that's sure to make you not the racist idiot at the party. And in the words of this guy, leave all your racist comments below. So today I'm going to teach you how to do blackface. What we're about to do is apply some shoe polish. And what we're just going to do with the shoe polish is not do blackface, you dumb Hey guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe to Farago's YouTube channel and we'll see you next week. Bye!